sets it up nicely, I think you'll agree, ladies and gentlemen. Would you please welcome Roy Jones Jr. to London. Put your hands together and give a, an equally warm welcome to Joe Calzaghi. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Uh, a very great pleasure for me, Paul Dempsey, to welcome you all to London and to the Hard Rock Cafe, for whom we thank for their fantastic hospitality today. We are going to rock the world with this one. This is a Satanta Sports press conference to promote Joe Calzaghi against Roy Jones Jr. A super fight, Saturday, November the 8th, New York City, for the Ring Magazine light heavyweight title. And I think it's fair to say the world will be watching this one. 
For us on Satanta Sports, it's a delight to have yet another huge fight occasion featuring Joe against one of the true greats of boxing, a legend already on both sides of the Atlantic, Roy Jones Jr., the one and only. We're very pleased to welcome both boxers above everybody else on the top table today. This is the London leg of a promotional tour which has already taken in New York and Los Angeles, and they're still smiling, and better yet, they're still talking to each other. I have to say on my personal behalf, I am desperately looking forward to this one. Yet another world-class boxing occasion for us. Two of the iconic boxing figures of the last 25 years. Unbelievable careers to date, and happily keen and ready to go again. Moreover, this one takes place in the spiritual home of world boxing, reopened for the last few years and already restating its claim to be the ultimate fight arena and the place where I think most fighters in the world, at least once in their career, want to say, I fought there, in the footsteps of the all-time greats. Madison Square Garden, New York, once more Saturday, November the 8th, and it is live and exclusive on Satanta Sports 1 that night. And if I may stress, this is not a pay-per-view event. More on that later. Joe, of course, comes into this one on the back of two huge victories on Satanta Sports. Firstly, the unforgettable night, which earned him the Sports Personality of the Year Award, among many other accolades. His performance against Mikkel Kessler in November 2007, where, for the record, he added the WBA and WBC super middleweight title belts to his collection. And more recently, he traveled to the United States to experience his first ever fight occasion in the US in Las Vegas, turning over another legend, Bernard Hopkins, that for the Ring Magazine light heavyweight title. The story just gets better and better for this man. We love it, and he loves us more than ever. Of course. So without further ado, let me first hand over to the man who remains the undisputed super middleweight world champion, holder of the WBO, WBA, and WBC belt, at least at the time of going to press, but more importantly, the Ring Magazine title holder at super middleweight and at light heavyweight, Ladies and gentlemen, Joe Calzaghi. Thanks, Paul. Obviously, thanks for everybody tuning out today. Um, thanks to Satanta Sports, HBO, Team Jones for making this possible, ourselves. Um, what can I say? This is, this is a dream fight for me. I've always been a, a fan of Roy. You know, I've always admired his style, the way he fights, his speed, his power. You know, to me, He's one of the greatest fighters has been. Um, Four-weight world champion, what can you say? Uh, so, you know, it's been a long, hard road for me. World champion into my 11th year. Um, it took me eight years to finally get a unification fight. You know, no, so, you know, it's politics and, and things like that. Frust very frustrated. Finally, I've got my chance against, uh, against Jeff Lacey. The rest is history. You know, ran to poor Jeff. Then, <laughs> then um, <coughs> bless him. Then, um, obviously, Mikko Kessler, younger fighter, yet again, you know, a younger fighter who's going to kick my ass. A lot of people thought he was going to lose that fight. Came to the top, finally unifying the title after nearly 10 years of being the champion in front of 50,000 my home fans. So then, after doing so much, you have to sit back and think, what else is it, what else is it to do? So, uh, you know, I sat home and uh, you know, the, the, I read, you know, the forums and, the, the, you know, what it says on the internet, this guy from Europe, he'll never come to the States, you know, he's too afraid to come and fight the big boys in the States. So I fought B-Hop out there, you know, he talked a good fight, you know, he bad-mouthed me, he said he's going to do this, do that. All he wanted to do was hold, hug me, try and kiss me. So, um, done, done the business there. Um, so there's only one thing left for me. Is, you know, a guy that wanted to fight throughout my career, a fighter, fighter that I've admired, and that's Roy Jones Jr., you know, legend of the ring, four-way world champion, you know, and uh, obviously a few years ago we went through a bit of a bad patch, a couple of defeats. I was one of the guys that probably thought maybe that's the end of Roy, but like all great fighters, he's come back and proved to the world, you know, he's still a great fighter. I was very impressed with his fight with uh, Tito Trinidad. Still showed, you know, tremendous reflexes, speed, power. So, what can I say? You know, to finish off my career fighting with the greatest fighters in Madison Square Garden, the mecca of boxing. You know, so for me, it's a dream, and I'm really, really looking forward to being in the best shape of my life. 
And though Roy has boxed at the garden, he's always before pretty good at the garden, so he's pretty happy to be there. But this is my first fight at the garden, and I want to leave my stamp there. So you can, you can believe one thing. This is going to be a great fight. This, 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 you know, we don't hold. We don't go in there to cheat. We go in there to entertain. And you're going to see one hell of a fight come November the 8th. Joe, thank you very much indeed. <laughs> Enzo, would you care to embellish your son's remarks? Yeah. <laughs> Without singing. <laughs> Without singing. No, let's say, Joe said it all. And um, it is once, I can actually say once in my whole life, I've uh, liked Joe's opponent for once. I do like him. And I like the team. I respect them. They are first very nice people. And on top of that, they can actually fight. That's even better. <laughs> Roy, respect, mate. Listen, but th this is a fight, obviously, Joe's been all, all the time telling me, can you get on? Can we get on? Can we get on? I just said, he had a little bad patch on, boy, but come out with fly colours now. And uh, they got to be respected, one thing only, because uh, the major thing, they made the fight. Joe and Roy made this fight. Yeah, and so, uh, you know, I can just sit on the side and let Joe get on with what he did. I'm happy to be part of it now. And uh, there's going to be, like say, Joe, Joe said, it's going to be a fantastic, fantastic night on the 4th of, not the 4th, what is it? Uh, I was thinking about my anniversary. It was the wrong date. Sorry about that. That's the ring. So that's, that's my record. That's it, yes, yeah, I'm ring. Let's go back another one, right? Um, it's going to be a fantastic night on the 8th. Okay, like I say, Satanta's on board and... Um, um, uh, JPO, and it's been a fantastic day. And uh, see you all. Ciao. Ci vediamo. Thank you, Enzo. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd now like you to get to know the opponent a little better, but that is a great disservice to this man to call him an opponent. He's never been or will be anybody's opponent. He's a true great of boxing, a legend of sports in and out of the ring a former middleweight, super middleweight, light heavyweight, and historically heavyweight champion of the world. We didn't think that could be done, but it included some phenomenal achievements along the way. In every sense in boxing, he has been a history maker already. Roy Jones, Jr. Roy. Thank you. Um, it's an honor and a pleasure to be here. I thank God for blessing us with a safe flight back over here. It was a very long flight, which neither myself nor Joe like to fly too much, but uh, I'm very glad to be here. Um, I almost wish we could have fought over here because I know you guys want to see the fight just as bad as the people in the United States want to see the fight. But the good thing about it is it's going to be such a great fight till we probably will have to bring the second one over here anyway. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to having a great fight. Uh, I think if we give a, my country a great one, then we should deserve to give his country a great one. And uh, I'm looking forward to it. So, I mean, I have never fought a guy with the speed that Joe has, um, probably him likewise. Uh, it's a fight that's been, we've been thinking, I know he's been wanting to fight me and I've been wanting to fight him for the longest time, but a lot of times when you got people who are more worried about themselves and what happens with their future, they won't allow the two athletes to get together. And that's why they say God is always on time. This was the perfect opportunity for me and Joe to sit down and decide, you know what, we get to do what we want to do, how we want to do it. And so I'm so glad that he was able to get free. Uh, I'm always able to get free because I always duck and dodge pretty good. However, my ducking and dodging better be up to par come November the 8th because I already envision he's going to start punching about 7 o'clock Friday night and he probably going to stop punching about 2 o'clock Sunday evening. So I need to be ready <laughs> and be prepared to deal with it. Um, I look forward to it, though, because it's a challenge and it's a guy who, truthfully, they don't give him the credit he deserves. He's beaten some very good fighters, some very brilliant fighters, and even – at this age in his career, in this era in his career, 30, 45 and 0 is something that just doesn't happen by mistake. So you got to know what you're dealing with here. There's a lot of guys, including one of my great friends who got injured in the ring over here by the name of Gerald McClellan. Gerald was not never 20 and 0. He got beat about his 13th fight by a guy who was supposed to be an opponent. So it's very difficult for anybody to maintain an undefeated record for that period of time. So I know what I got myself in here. I know what I'm dealing with. And I'm looking forward to it. So come November 8th, Y'all be ready. Y'all, if you can't get there, check it out on Satana. Um, we will be there to put on a hell of a show for you all. And if y'all plan on coming, you can go to Ticketmaster.com, get your ticket, and come over there and watch it. Sit ringside, because we are going to put on a show. Thank y'all so much. I love being here, and I look forward to coming back. And we love it. We're loving having you here, too. 
Um, I should introduce a gentleman down toward the very end of the table on my left, your right, ladies and gentlemen, who is as distinguished in his own field as Roy has been in the ring, Alton Merkison, always at Roy's side, seemingly forever anyway, and certainly is the man right now who's got the job of making Roy go tick, tick, tick again. Alton, welcome to London. It's a pleasure being here. Um, you know, I don't have too much to say. Uh, usually the, the boxers speak after uh, their staff, but uh, they said it all. This is going to be one hell of a fight. You've got two legends. You've got Joe Kalzaki, who uh, is, is, a, is a, a, a hero in itself, and Roy is a hero in, in himself if, uh, on our side of the uh, water in the United States. These guys uh, has been trying to put this fight together for a long time, and I'm just pleased that they got together as individuals and uh, by themselves put the fight together without involving anybody else. And uh, it's going to be a tremendous fight. And Roy, Roy made a statement just a few minutes ago, and we had never talked about it before. But in the back of my head, I've said to myself that this fight is going to be ex so exciting, so electrifying, that they'll probably have to do it again. Uh, Joe's talking about retiring, but after this fight on the 8th of November, I'm pretty sure he's going to change his mind and uh, ask for a rematch with Roy. So make sure you come there on the 8th of November. It's going to be one hell of a fight. Yeah. All right, Alton, thank you very much indeed. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, just before we do open it for questions, if you just bear with me for just a moment or two, one or two service announcements, they used to be called. Firstly, I'm delighted to also announce today that Roy will not only be on our screens for this fantastic boxing occasion as the main event himself, but he will be part of our future boxing programming as an analyst, and something he's done with distinction already in the United States, providing boxing fans with his unique insight into a variety of our top forthcoming bouts exclusively live on Satanta Sports. That's the first thing. And secondly, if you would permit me again, uh, just to stress that this fight between Kazagi and Roy Jones Jr., as well as all the other great fights on Satanta, are not pay-per-view attractions. They are not for pay-per-view. They are watched as part of our monthly subscription service to our regular subscribers, and there is no contract required. And thirdly, viewers can subscribe to this fight and others on Satanta in the rest of 2008, headlining with David Hay and Kelly Pavlik against Bernard Hopkins by visiting www.satanta.com. And there is a phone number also, 08712 003322, 08712 003322. That, of course, is in addition to the thrilling action we've brought you so far in 2008, headlined, unforgettably, by Margarito against Cotto and Pacquiao against Marquez. Truly the best in world boxing so far this year on Satanta Sports. And if I may finally, finally draw your attention to my esteemed colleague, Mr. Bunce, Steve Bunce's Boxing Hour. Thank you very much indeed. Which will be live tonight on Satanta Sports 1, 6.30, with appearances from Joe and Roy, Plus, we will be speaking by phone, I understand, to Kelly Pavlik and Bernard Hopkins, all the rest of the news in the Boxing Week as well. I'll be there, but it's Steve's show. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much indeed for your attendance today. Just to remind you that we are live on at least one of the sports news networks at present, so we are opening the floor to questions, but if you would please just identify yourself, and we'll do our best to identify you through the lights. The floor is open. What motivates me is the fact that I've been a guy throughout my entire career. I think God put me on this earth to give to be an example for people. That if you have faith, you can come back from anything. In 1988, I was robbed of a gold medal in Seoul, Korea. I had to bounce back. In about 1997, I think, they robbed where they took my title, gave it to Montel Griffin. He was laid out on the floor. How does the loser, the guy laid out on the floor, win the title? So I had to come back and do that. Then, as of late, I went through a situation to where I lost more fights at one time than I ever lost in my career. And um, now I had to bounce back from that, too. So it's like... God knows how to motivate me much better than I ever could motivate myself. And he has me motivated right now. Thank you. 
M Mike Sinclair, um, how did you two come to put this fight together? Who, who called who first? Uh, for me? Oh, yeah, well, basically, I, I rung um, Roy, spoke to him after the, the fight with uh, ben ha Bernard, had the picture, they got a picture of my boys as well, and uh, just hit it off and just said, basically, you know, we'll have a chat. And I was obviously a free agent after the fight with Hopkins, so in charge of my own career. So um, rang Roy, and we, we met and done the deal pretty quick. And when he told me he was a free agent, my heart smiled because I know I ain't got to worry about nobody else but him. And if he says he wants to fight, I can believe it. But if he says he want to fight and he's not a free agent, then he got to figure out, well, what's the other person going to do? So when he said he was a free agent, that was the happiest, thing, happiest news I had gotten in about five years. How come you guys have hit it off so well? Because we're true athletes, true champions, true guys that respect what one another do, that has done. We respect one another's accomplishments. We both definitely, because we're great fighters, we want to go out there and see what will happen if we fight. We, we want to know just like y'all want to know. Uh, we all can talk about it and say, well, we're going to win because of this or we're going to win because of that. But truly, styles make fights. We really don't know either. That's why we want to see. That's why we're so eager. That's why he's going to be in the best shape of his life, and I'm going to try to get in the best shape that I can possibly get in because we want to see what's going to happen. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> just said <laughs> Exactly. And the great thing is, you know, my strongest thing is my speed. Roy is his speed, and that was going to be so exciting for a boxing fan is um, how, how either of us are going to cope with each other's speed. And obviously the winner is going to be the one that can adapt. So it's going to be brilliant. This is a fight where you're going to have everything. Simple as that. It's, it's, it's going to be a beautiful fight. Ron. Um, yeah, Ron Lewis of the Times. Uh, Joe, first of all, you were actually originally meant to be boxing on Saturday. Take us through what happened and what's the situation now with your hand. Well, basically, you know, sat Saturday, I didn't realize that it was, it was a mate of mine's birthday. You know, they got a good piss up and that. So I figured I couldn't be in two places at once. So I, br I broke a nail and just... <laughs> no. Nah. Um, You're getting just, used to Welsh humor now, are you? Yeah, I'm very just, uh, just sprayed my wrist. I sprayed my wrist in the gym and I had to take about three, four weeks off. And obviously, you know... In the biggest fight of your life, you, you know, you can't, you can't afford to, uh, to go into a fight injured. And as you know, I've been injured so many times in the past, but hey, I'm still undefeated. You know, it's no good fighting and being injured and making excuses afterwards. It's no good. <laughs> you have to be 100% on the day. So, you know, thank God um, everything is going good at the moment. My hands feel, feel, feel great and uh, everything's, everything's going to be uh, on for November the 8th. Is, uh, do you think you got the credit for um, Hopkins that you uh, really deserved? And, or is that another case of the previous 44 fights as well? Well, it's, listen, you know the score. You know, I've been world champion nearly 11 years. And you know, I still have people that, that, that doubt us out there. You know, um, Jeff Lees, he was going to come over and beat me into a pulp. You see where I done to Jeff. Um, then he's overrated, overhyped, one-dimensional. Kessler the same. Hopkins, he's an old man. But listen, you've got to remember one thing. I'm old. I'm joining that old man's club. So uh, I've kicked young ass for like 43 fights. Why can't I pick on somebody my own age or maybe a little <laughs> bit older? You know, but uh, you know, or I think there's only about less than two years between me and Roy. So you know, I know I look about 28, but listen, I'm 36, nearly 37. Don't be fooled. Roy, what is it gave you the determination apart from the spiritual beliefs you've referred to already, to rededicate yourself and set new goals in the ring? Well, I just don't like to leave things undone. I like to make sure I do things the best way, uh, to the best of my ability. And, um, you know, people say, well, a guy asked me the stupidest question in the world yesterday. Why would you take this fight? Why not? What else am I going to do, go duck hunting? I mean, <laughs> at 39 years old, you got an opportunity to fight one of the best guys to ever come through the sport from this area over here. And what else am I going to do? I'm going to think I'm going to play in the NBA All-Star game or the Super Bowl. Or, I mean, what else am I going to do? Why would I not take a fight to this magnitude? That was my question to him. So, I mean, for no. me, I, I get motivated just because it's a big fight. And like I said, I'm just like y'all. We both want to see what's going to happen when we collide. We know we both have a whole lot of speed. As a matter of fact, a state trooper could sit ringside and ride a lot of tickets that night because it's going to be a lot of speed. You heard over there? There'll be a lot of speed in the ring that night. So um, 
I look forward to it, and I know it's going to be a very entertaining night, and I just can't wait. Joe, from your side, uh, we mentioned already that this man is a history maker, the, the run from middleweight to heavyweights, the, the only man since Bob Fitzsimmons, I think in 1897, I'll say that again, 1897, to have done that. You've spoken many times over the last two years that you need to find a reason to fight a man, that there's got to be some, a target, something that the other guy has got that maybe you desire in boxing terms. Is it the fact that he's a history maker which has made you so determined to at last meet him? Was this not, is this not what you've achieved in the ring? It's his style. You know, um, certain fighters get excited by other fighters' styles. And for instance, you know, when I fought Hopkins, I knew it was going to be a boring fight. I knew there was going to be a lot of holding. I knew it was going to be an ugly fight. I just knew that I just had to go in there and do the win. But in this fight, I'm excited because I know the talent that Roy has, and I know the talent that I have. And we both want not just to win, we both want to entertain. That's the difference. We don't go in there trying to hold and steal fights. We both entertainers. As you know, I go in there and throw as many punches as I can throw, 1,000 plus punches, if I can in the fight. Roy likes to, to get in there and, and, and do his thing, poke his tongue out, shake his ass, whatever he was going to do in the fight. I'm going to give him some back as well. So I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure it's going to be, this is going to be a great fight. And like I said, you know, I've, I've watched Roy from the amateur days. And you, to, be a, to be a true champion, you want to, fight, you want to face the best. You know, I could stay in Wales and, and just f face somebody and retire, but I wouldn't be content unless I fought the best. So now I'm fighting when the best fighters has been. And I'm really excited to put my skills against Roy's. And like he said, November the 8th, we'll see who's the best. Roy, you may, you may have detected already that some of his friends feel Joe is a changed man over the last two years, at least in his public perception. That there's a warmth to him and a confidence in public and enthusiasm for engaging with the public that maybe wasn't there previously. From your side, we know what a star you are in, a, in the United States. Do you feel that perhaps this is an overdue opportunity on this tour to finally meet, greet, and get to know your British-based fan club, which yeah. is substantial? Yeah, I think it's very substantial, and I think it's a great opportunity. But at the same time, I think the time, and like I said, God is always on time. Joe is opening up probably a lot more because he's free now. He's only working for himself. We are partners, it's me and him, that's a rep. I mean, we got people like Garrett down there to help make this fight happen. Want to give Garrett a round of applause. <laughs> we got Gareth McGee. Williams, ladies and gentlemen. We got McGee Wright and uh, John Work down here who also made this fight. They came over here with me when I came to see Joe, so I want to get him a round of applause. And John Work for Roy. That Ed Welcome Keenan. to London, by the way, John. A few more, um, Miss Swanson and Miss uh, James and a few more other people, but um, for us to finally get the opportunity to come here and to be able to be free. See, there's no pressure. We ain't got no promoters. We ain't got to worry about how much they're going to take from us after the fight happens. So usually you got to be ready for a fight, then you got to be ready for the fight after the fight. Because you fight for your money, then you got to fight to get your money. Well, that ain't going to happen no more. Right. <laughs> we right. fight and we ain't much worry about what's going to happen afterwards. The only thing we worry about afterwards now is how quick can we get up in the car up and fight again. Well, maybe one final word from both of you then. Let's stop the loving for a second, shall we, and get down to business. <laughs> Joe, what will the outcome be on November the 8th? As you know, um, what can I say? It's going to be a great fight on the night, but of course I'm going to win. What can I say? I don't lose. You know, I don't lose. So I'm going to say I'm going to win the fight. Um, but above all, what I'm going to say is, you're going to see an exciting fight. You know, this is, going to, this is going to be the fight of the year. And I honestly, in my heart, believe this is going to be the fight of the year. And I know that I have to prepare and to be the best I can be to beat Roy. You know, I can't, I can't afford to go in this fight and then the rest to meet him or as re too relaxed as I was against Hopkins because then, you know, be a big problem. The same as Roy, he knows he has to be the best he can be. So it's going to be a tremendous fight. And last word to our guest today. Well, I'd like to thank all y'all for coming out here today to check me out. It's my first time really doing a press conference over here in front of you all, and I really love doing it, and I hope that I can rouse and dazzle y'all once more come November 8th. Y'all know I'm going to be out there in shape to do what I do, and like he said, of course, I'm looking to come out with my hands up as the victor, but Styles may fight, and I'm looking forward to a wonderful fight, and I do believe that this fight will turn out to be the fight of the year. So look forward to it. Um, 
May God be with us, and the best man will win. All right, Roy and Joe, thank you both.